Hey guys, my name is Jackson Chang and today I'm going to be showing you how to sharpen your image in a non-destructive way using a high pass filter. There are other non-destructive ways of sharpening your image, but I prefer the high pass method because I feel like it gives me the most control as I can clearly see how much and where the sharpening is happening in the image. First, I'm going to show you the normal destructive way of sharpening an image. And then I'm going to show you my preferred non-destructive way of doing it. Before I start doing anything in Photoshop, I make sure that I duplicate the layer first so that I don't destroy the original image. I right click on the image layer, select duplicate layer, click OK, and I'll just name this layer image 2. The normal way of sharpening an image is just to apply a sharpen filter to the image itself. So usually if you were to do that, I would select the smart sharpening you can see there's a bunch of adjustments here. Once I find what I like, I'll just click OK. It usually takes a little bit of time. What's happening here is that sharpening has been applied to the original image itself. This is before and this is after. The problem with this is that I can't actually go back and change the sharpening adjustments. The sharpening is applied to the image itself, so I can't go back and change it. So this is the destructive way of sharpening an image. What I'll show you is the non-destructive way of sharpening an image. So I'll just come here and delete this layer and I'll start again. So delete that layer. Once again, I'll right click on the image layer and then select duplicate layer and I'll just name this image sharpen and I'll just click OK. This creates a copy of the original image. Right click on this again and select convert to smart object. This way we preserve the original image without destroying it. I'll just change the name of this to sharpen layer. Select adjustment layer, select black and white. And then what I'll do is create a clipping mask on top of the sharpen layer. Right click on the black and white and select create clipping mask. What's happening here is we are only applying the black and white adjustment layer to the layer below it. Next, we're going to select sharpen layer select filter, go to the other, and select high pass. And then it'll bring up this menu here. What the high pass filter is doing is finding the edges of your image and bringing out the details of it. What we have here at the moment is um, the radius of 10, and we want to adjust this to around maybe two or three. So let's just say three. The idea of this is that you should be able to just make out the outline of the image itself. So here you can see the eyes, the eyebrow, and the lips, and some of the hair, and that's what you want because that's what you want to highlight and sharpen in the image. Once you find the radius you want, just click OK, and that applies the high pass filter to your sharpen layer. The cool thing about the non-destructive way of editing is that I can always come back to the layer and make further adjustments if I want to later on. I can select the sharpen layer, double click on high pass, and then I can make further adjustments to the radius if I really want to. So once I've done that, I just want to group the sharpen layer and the black and white adjustment layer. Select the sharpen layer, hold shift, select the black and white adjustment layer and go command G to group them. And I'll just rename this to sharpen. Right now, this sharpen group layer has a blending mode of pass through. You want to select overlay. Sometimes I choose um, soft light as well, but usually I just go overlay. What the overlay blending mode is doing to the sharpen layer is that it's making the gray areas disappear and only exaggerate the edges from that layer itself. I'll just zoom in a little bit and then I'll just turn on and off this so you can see the difference. Actually, I'll just come here and I'll just increase the high pass so you guys can see better. Let's change this to 10. Doesn't look good, but you guys can see what I mean. So just turn this on and off. Right, zoom out. I'm just going to leave it at this for now so you guys can see better in the video of what I'm doing. So what you can see here is the sharpen layer applied to the whole image itself. Sometimes you want this, but sometimes you just want specific areas to be sharpened. For example, like the background, I don't want it to be sharpened. I just want to keep it kind of blurry. And all I want to sharpen is the eye, the eyebrows, the lips, and the media hair. The way that I'll do this is to create a masking layer for my sharpen layer. So I'll come here, select layer mask, Click on this, and that should add a white thumbnail to the layer itself, as you can see here. 
and I'll make sure I'll select the layer mask and press Command and I to invert the layer mask. When the layer mask is black, it takes out the effect of that layer. What we want to do is paint the areas we want sharpening white in the layer mask. And we'll select our brush, making sure this is selected, make sure our brush is set to white. And what we'll do is come to the eye, start painting the areas that we want to be sharpened. So in this case, the eye, see here, and then the eyebrows, and then I'll just sharpen the lips a little bit. And then I'll just zoom out and I'll make the brush slightly bigger to sharpen the hair a little bit. And that's it. And then I'll just change the high pass filter back to three. Let's press OK. I'll zoom in before and after. Another way to control the intensity of the sharpening is to change the opacity of your sharpening layer. So here, right now, is currently 100%. I can just change this to 50. Usually, I'll change it to 50 just because it makes it a bit more natural. I don't know if you can see this on the video, but I'm just turning it on and off so you can see the difference. And this is how I like to sharpen my image in Photoshop. So to recap, the reason I prefer the high pass sharpening method is because I feel like it gives me the most control in terms of the intensity and where I want the sharpening to happen. I can also see in the sharpen layer exactly where and how much the image edges are being affected. Hope this video helps and thank you for watching.